and then if we zoom in on you it's pretty sick and maybe the uh <laughs> that my friend <laughs> is <laughs> that's from another world uh, it's gonna be special yeah All right, guys, I'm with Adrian. As I've already mentioned, he's a bit of a pioneer when it comes to astrophotography time lapses, blurring the lines between deep space astrophotography and landscape astrophotography, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, normally they're two sort of separate genres, but he's kind of mixed them both together, and the results are just insane, man. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, yeah, I'll show you a couple of the time lapses now. Basically, they are kind of deep space time lapses. You get nebulas and different galaxies. You can see satellites cutting across. But also, he tries to squeeze in a bit of landscape interest in there as well. So, um, I've got a few questions for Adrian. I thought it'd be a good idea to do it as a video so you guys can kind of get some insight as well because, like me, Adrian doesn't keep secrets, right? No, I don't. <laughs> we, we both like to share our knowledge and just kind of inspire other people to get out there and just enjoy this kind of photography enjoy the night sky and um, so hopefully you guys learn a thing or two today and you feel a bit inspired to get out there and uh, and try it yourself so I guess first and foremost what kind of equipment do you need for this kind of stuff um, well basically you need um, a really good low light camera uh, it's super important because uh, um, you want to get the maximum out of a single shot so it's not like a typical uh, stacked image for example so you need like the best uh, sensor possible so you use a 60? yeah I personally use a 60 uh, to do all that uh, I also use the Sony line the um, uh, seven, uh, Alpha 7 line yeah. uh, which is pretty good um, as for noise um, but uh, so yeah, so good camera, low light camera, of course a bright and sharp lens. Uh, actually, bright of course for astrophotography, but sharp is actually pretty important because again, uh, you want to maximize everything, all that details um, in in this single shot. So basically, you want uh, a super sharp lens and um, tripod, of course, intervalometer, and if you can have a tracker. That, um, that's something I'm experimenting on right now, you know, having like a track, have the same area of the sky and then um, add a little bit of a uh, foreground in there. But uh, that's definitely a plus because you're gonna get so much more details. Yeah, so when you track, you can basically take longer exposures of the stars than you normally can. Because of this motion, the stars kind of move in the night sky, but with a tracker, you can take longer exposures without the stars moving, right? Mm -hmm. So you get a lot more detail out of uh, nebula and things like that. But um, you carry a lot of gear, man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy my carries back, like back hurts kilos. right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, do you plan to like lighten the load at all? Like, yeah. Um, so because I really want to have like the best variety of yeah. or the widest variety of shots. Like, I, I really want some motion control, so I, I carry around this ramp. A slider thing. I also have like uh, like super st sturdy tripods, like super heavy tripods. So heavy. Um, the Vixen Polari, you know, all that, all the batteries, all that, all that weighs a ton, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Pure dedication, man. I yeah. take my hat off to you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, um, so yeah, um, of all your time lapses, do you have a favorite one? Yeah, as of right now, uh, is the one that I took actually last year last November here actually okay. right here right oh. at this spot no um, that was the shot of Orion um, rising against the uh, the observatory or the the telescopes is that the one with loads of satellites yeah yeah that blew my mind yeah that was I mean, that, yeah that's uh, I mean I never imagine first I never imagined to get as much um, signal in that um, yeah um, H alpha uh, hydrogen emission 
uh, those red, I mean, it's just crazy. And then the, the Orion, and then you mentioned the satellites. Yeah. I could not believe my eyes. I, I thought those were regular satellites, but then again, Insane. I, you know, I realized they were actually geosynchronous sat yeah. satellites. Yeah, it was so. the first time I'd seen satellites in a time lapse, apart yeah. from the International Space Station, but right. this is a different league, man. Like, yeah. absolutely insane. Okay, I got another question. I've been here for, I guess, five nights now, mm -hmm. and every night, apart from tonight, tonight seems to be the exception, has been so damn windy, like relentlessly windy, and I've been struggling to get sharp shots, even at 14 mil. Right. How the hell are you using a tracker and a 135 <laughs> mil lens and getting such sharp, incredible results? Yeah, so that's, that's actually a good question. Um, that's where you Im your imagination has to come into play because um, of course you're not gonna get the shots that you wanted. You know, the whole day you've been dreaming of that, okay, maybe I can take this shot. No, it's not gonna be possible at night because you realized all of a sudden that the wind had picked up. So, um, so you might wanna improvise and this is when yeah. the imagination part comes into play. Um, then let's, let's say you find a really nice location that is uh, protected from the wind. Then you, I don't know, the, the, the ideas just pop up. Uh, <laughs> it might be, you know, like not that interesting to people, yeah. but then you might have an idea, okay, may, maybe I can try this different setup. Maybe I can try this different Forces angle. Forces you to be creative. Exactly. And this is, this is where I get actually most of my shots because yeah. I never really, I do plan in advance, but most of them is just improvisation. Yeah, it's the same for me a lot. I have a plan and I yeah. go out for that plan. But if it doesn't go accordingly, then like you're forced to be creative, and then you're like, oh, actually, this shot's like way <laughs> better than what I was going for anyway. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Damn. Um, so as far as we know, you were the first guy to time lapse Ro Opuki. Mm -hmm. That uh, I know of. Yeah. Um, uh, definitely to that caliber of like 25 frames per second time lapse. Yeah. Astro modded camera, that focal length, like it was insane, and. As I said, your work is incredibly inspiring. And whilst I was out last night, mm -hmm. I kind of had a little idea where I kind of want to merge your tracking skills with my sort of love of getting a creative, getting creative with the foreground and sort of lining up a foreground and trying to tell some kind of story. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel about a collab? Man, I'm. Um <laughs> you're asking me really? <laughs> I mean, we're sitting here together and you're asking me about a collab? I mean, Let's come on. Do it, man. Yeah, of course, of course, I'm uh, totally up for it. I mean, okay, uh, it's not going to be easy, but no. I think together we can pull it off. What do you think? I think we can. Okay, I'll show you guys. My idea was to hike up onto this ridge line and use Adrian's tracking skills to get a long distance portrait with Ro of Yuki kind of bursting out of my chest. I don't want it to be a composite of like a silhouette from uh, twilight and then a picture from night and just combine the nice and easy in Photoshop. I want to actually get the alignment. Yeah, you think it's possible? That's going to be rather difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, your idea was to the the dark lanes kind of burst out yeah, of your yeah. chest, right? Exactly. Um, that's going to demand some precise <laughs> timing, I think. It's precise, yeah, so it's precise it's alignment, alignment yeah. and the timing. You've got to get like the timing spot on. Yeah. And communication as well is probably going to be difficult. Yeah, there's a delay. I can hear I can hear myself after you. In fact, I mean, I can hear myself myself like a... Sorry? Who knows what'll happen? It will try. <laughs> so Adrian uses a Vixen Polari star tracker which allows you to get longer exposures of the stars before they trail, which is just as well because he's going to be shooting on a Samyang 135mm f2 lens and that's going to be mounted onto a Canon 6D which has been astro modified. So the stock infrared cutoff filter has been replaced with a beta filter and this allows you to capture more color and detail in the hydrogen alpha emission nebula regions. Now I've recently astro modified my Sony A7S II so I'll be making a much more in-depth video about that very soon. Uh, hopefully I can find that rock easily. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I went to get myself into position whilst Adrian dialed in his settings. Settings will be on bulb, ISO 6400, and uh, um, f2.8. And we experimented with some different exposures. So first of all, we did some foreground exposures with the star tracker off, uh, and that gives you a nice sharp foreground. But obviously, the stars are trailing. Adoken! So then we did some exposures with the tracker on so that you get nice sharp stars but of course the foreground is now blurry because the camera is physically moving. And then we did some half speed shots so instead of tracking the stars at the exact speed you track the stars at half their speed. So you can get slightly longer exposures than you normally can without star trailing but your foreground doesn't quite get as blurry as it would if you were to track at full speed. We decided to both take the images home and edit them in our own style without telling the other which image we were going to edit or whether we were going to choose the half speed tracked exposure or whether we were going to do stacking and blending with the foreground. So Adrian decided to keep things simple and use the half speed tracked exposure. So this is just a single exposure at 15 seconds tracked at half the speed of the stars and he's done a great job here of extracting good colors out of that i mean to think that this is a single exposure uh, it's, it's just crazy i on the other hand decided to stack i think it was about 20 exposures of the sky and this helped reduce the noise and unveil a bit more detail and then i blended this onto my favorite foreground which was the one with row off yuki bursting from my chest which was the the plan i had before shooting and it's amazing to see this idea come to a reality and I couldn't have done it without Adrian being there so huge thanks to Adrian for helping me out with this. I'm going to drop a link to Adrian's YouTube channel in the video description below. Make sure to go and follow him, he's got some amazing time lapse work there as well as astrophotography tutorials and vlogs, there's even a vlog from uh, the time we spent together in La Palma. And also follow him on Instagram and Facebook. He does live streams of the Aurora on Facebook, so definitely worth following him for that. And I'm sure it's not going to be the end of our astromance either. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching another video. Make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.